You know, paradigms control the results of your life. They have power over everything from your relationships to your income. And when you shift your paradigm, everything in your life improves. Hello and welcome. I'm Bob Proctor. And I want to welcome you to the Paradigm Shift, where we're going to teach you how to make dramatic improvements in your life. You know, when you talk about a paradigm shift, you're talking about one of the most important things that you can study because you're really learning how to take control over what's going on inside of you. And I want to recommend that you make a decision right here and right now. Stop whatever you're doing mentally and play a little game with me. Make a decision that you're going to let your paradigms work for you. Good thing to do. Now think of this for a moment. We have one life so far as we know. We've got one bite at the apple. So it's really about lifestyle. And you know, we can have an absolutely phenomenal lifestyle. We have been blessed with abundance everywhere you look. And it's a matter of accepting it. Now, not only do we have to learn how to accept it, we've got to learn how to let go of some of the roadblocks that stand between ourselves and the good that we desire. Do you know, you talk about the miracle of the mind. And the mind truly is a miracle. Dr. J.B. Ryan said the mind is the greatest power in all of creation. Now, I want you to think about that. The mind is the greatest power in all of creation. I have people from time to time that come up to me and they'll say, no, no, God is the greatest power in all of creation. I said, wait a minute. You've got to listen and you've got to think. God is the creator. The mind is the creation. The mind is, without question, the greatest power in all of creation. So... We're compelled to really learn how to utilize these phenomenal powers we have the right way. And I found in studying uh, some of the greatest leaders that ever lived, um, they, they all had a golden thread running through their life. They had, uh, they had commonalities amongst them. Napoleon Hill was commissioned by Andrew Carnegie to go out and write The Laws of Achievement, The Laws of Success. Carnegie at the time was a billionaire, supposedly the only one on the planet at the time. And he thought it was an absolute crime that people that had developed great wisdom went to their grave and took it with them. And no one had ever sat down and gathered the information of what they did or what they had learned. And so he asked Napoleon Hill to do it. And Napoleon Hill accepted the challenge. Carnegie went on to introduce him to some of the most powerful people in the world. He became an advisor to presidents of the United States. He became great friends with Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Firestone. And he found that there was one prerequisite if you wanted to win in life. And that was you had to have a major definite purpose. Without a major definite purpose, your life would be sort of wasted. You see, a purpose is something like a compass. Now, it's why we're living. Now, when you have the purpose set, then it's absolutely essential that you have a vision. The purpose is why we're doing what we're doing. The vision is how we're going to do it. We want to build a vision in our mind of exactly how we're going to execute our purpose. Now, these are not small challenges that we're faced with in laying these out. When we've got the vision down, then we want to set a goal. And the goal is how you take a bite out of the vision. I'll give you a good example. I wrote a paper on this one time, and I used this example in the paper. My wife and I live in Toronto in Canada. We were invited to a wedding in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Now, I knew where Tennessee was, but I didn't know where Gatlinburg was. So I said to Linda, listen, we've got a little bit of time. Why don't we drive there? You know, I'm flying somewhere every week, and I get the opportunity to drive. It was a good chance to be together and just have a visit. So we decided we would drive. And I said, go over to the uh, uh, Automobile Association and get one of those maps that tell us how to go. And so anyway, she came back, and she had these maps. And they're, they're all broken down in parts of how you get from Toronto to Gatlinburg. So we had the program all laid out in front of us. Now let me explain how it went. Our first objective was to get to Detroit. And then we got to try it, we would go to Cincinnati. From Cincinnati, we were going to Lexington. From Lexington to Louisville. From Louisville to Gatlinburg. So let's put this all together. Our purpose was get to a wedding. The wedding was the purpose of the trip. Our wedding was the purpose. Gatlinburg was the vision. That's how we were going to get to the wedding. We were going to get to Gatlinburg. And to get to Gatlinburg, we had a series of goals that we had to execute. 
Now, the first goal was get to Detroit. We didn't have to worry about Cincinnati or Gatlinburg or anything. As long as the car was headed to Detroit, we watched the road signs, we were headed for Detroit, we were on purpose. Now, when we got to Detroit, we could forget Detroit. We didn't have to think of Detroit anymore. We wanted to focus on Cincinnati. And we just watched the street signs, or the, the highway signs, to Cincinnati. When we got to Cincinnati, then it was to Lexington. And so on and so on until we got to Gatlinburg and then we we're at the wedding. Now that's sort of the way it is. And we want to take a look at this. And we want to see how we can break this down. You know, Napoleon Hill is, I'm always Napo quoting Napoleon Hill because he had gathered such an enormous amount of information. But he said, what a different story people would have had to tell if they would adopt a definite purpose and then stand by that purpose until it had time to become an all-consuming purpose. And isn't that the truth? Do you know, most people don't have a purpose in life. They get up, they go to work, they, they say, well, everybody goes to work. That'd be a real good reason to quit. Whenever you're doing everything everybody else is doing, you're probably not going anywhere. Now, we should have a purpose. We should know exactly why we're doing something. Now, think of what he said. What a different story people would have to tell if they would adopt a definite purpose and then stand by that purpose until it had time to become an all-consuming purpose. You see, you get to the point where it controls you. First, you give life, action, and guidance to the idea. Then it takes on a power of its own and sweeps aside all opposition. And then it coaxes, nurses, and drives you. That's how successful people do it. They're not lucky. You know, in James Allen's little book, As a Man Thinketh, um, there's just such a phenomenal amount of good information. But in that book, he gave us something that is worth writing down. I want you to get a pen and a pad and really think about this, because it has to do with purpose, vision, and goals. He said, until thought is linked with purpose, there's no intelligent accomplishment. Now, if you play with that idea for a while, it's going to, uh, it's going to tell you that, well, I've, I've already mentioned in uh, other parts of this series that most people don't think, and they really don't. They've tricked themselves into believing that mental activity is thinking, and of course it's not. So he says, until thought is linked with purpose. In other words, if we don't have a purpose, there's no point in us even thinking. Because what are we going to do? We're going to go here, then we're going to go there. We're going to live like a cork in the ocean. But with the purpose, like I say, the purpose is like a compass and keeps us moving in the direction that we move. Do you know, I am probably presented with an opportunity at least every day, sometimes two and three in a day. And I have a very quick scanning method that I do mentally. I look at it and I first of all ask, is this going to be on purpose for me? If it's not on purpose, I don't even investigate it. I don't care how much money I could earn at it. I don't care how much fun I could have doing it. If it's not on purpose, I don't want it. I want everything I do to keep me moving in the direction I'm moving to keep my life on purpose. Well, Alan said, if thought, until thought is linked with purpose, there isn't any real intelligent accomplishment. Now, you might ask yourself, what is it you're attempting to accomplish with your life? You know, what are you really trying to do? Do you have a purpose? Because if you haven't got a purpose, <laughs> you're probably going around in circles. And that's why people get the same results over and over and over again. So it's worth looking at. You see, a purpose is, uh, it, it gives our life meaning. A purpose is, is something that gives direction to us. It tells us where we want to go. You know, it explains why you get out of bed in the morning and why you do what you're doing. So I guess the question is, how do you select a purpose? It's not an easy thing to do. I went with um, two business associates of mine to a ranch in Northern California, Clear Lake Oaks, California. And I, um, I spent three days there establishing my purpose. Now, this was after working for a long time, but I realized that my purpose was changing. What I started out doing in this industry and in this business, it was started to change. Uh, the world's changing. Our methods of communication, means of travel are changing. And I thought, my purpose is changing. And so I went with two very good friends of mine, John Asaraf and Mark Meyer Dirk, and we went to Clear Lake Oaks, California, to High Valley Ranch. It's owned by Jane Wilhite, marvelous lady. And this is a place, it's, I always look at it like a spiritual oasis. 
I go there and I go up to the Casa, the Casa Montaña, the house on the hill. Beautiful place on top of a mountain. I get up in the morning, I can go out and look down on the clouds someday or just stand in the balcony and watch deer graze on the lawn. And you see, this is a, it's a beautiful setting. It's quiet. You're close to nature. And I think you want to go to a place like this to establish a purpose. This isn't something you're going to do over a cup of coffee in a restaurant. This is where you want to sit down and ask yourself, what do you really want to do with your life? That's an enormous question. Now, I was doing what I wanted to do with my life till I got to a certain point, and I decided I wanted to change my direction a little bit. I actually quit the business I was in one time, and uh, I quit for, for good reason. I didn't get tired of what I was doing, or I got tired of how I was doing it, but I had to quit to come to that realization. Well, at any rate, we got up there, and we started philosophizing and talking and batting ideas back and forth. And it was very important how we chose the words to put the purpose together. Because what I was doing, I was saying, this is why I'm living like I'm living. And this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. You want to sit down, if you're trying to establish a purpose, ask yourself, what do I really love to do? That's very important. You see, well... A lot of people think, well, I can't earn a living doing what I love. You can earn a living at anything. You can make millions if you're doing what you really love. Because you're not going to bring the best out of yourself until you do establish what it is that you love to do. And that's how you establish the purpose. So you, you ask yourself, what do I really love to do? And then you start to put the words together, and pretty soon you've got a purpose established. Like, I sat with my wife one day, and she was trying to figure this out. And as I talked to her, and she established, she has her own company. She has a lot of people. It's a networking company, and she has people all over the world. And I said, well, what do you enjoy doing most? Now, I knew because I had observed her working for a number of years. And she really enjoyed working with the people that were serious and helping draw the best out of her, out of them. So she established her purpose was develop entrepreneurial situation or empower people to develop on, entrepreneurial situations that would reward them with time and money freedom. Now think of that. That's my wife's purpose. Her purpose is to empower people to develop entrepreneurial situations that will reward them with time and money freedom. Now that gives her a fair amount of leeway. It's a phenomenal purpose. What do you love to do? That's what she loves doing. And she spends her time doing it. She has time and money freedom. She does what she wants to do. I have time and money freedom. I do what I want to do. And that's what you want to do. But what is your purpose? And once you get the purpose, you start moving in the right direction. You know, great king of Israel, Solomon, he said, where there is no vision, the people are going to perish. Now think of this for a moment. I have mentioned on numerous occasions, this whole universe operates by law. And one of the laws is create or disintegrate. We're either moving ahead or we're moving backwards. Absolutely nothing stays where it is. Yet you'll see a lot of people say, but I like it just the way it is. Well, that may be true, but I'm going to tell you something. You're going to like it a lot more when it improves. Why did Solomon say if there is no vision, people will perish? Well, if there's no vision, there's no image in your mind. You have to have a clear-cut image in your mind. If there's no image, there's chaos in your mind. When you have image in your mind, that's when you start to attract things to you. That's when you start to move towards it. See, as you move towards the vision, the vision moves towards you. It's very important that we have a clear-cut vision, a picture of exactly how we're going to execute our purpose. So what Solomon said is accurate. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. What do great leaders do? Great leaders establish a vision for the people. In fact, that's what makes a great leader. A great leader is a person that is followed because people want to follow them. Now, what does that person do? That person establishes an enormous vision. It's an exciting vision. And then he gets the people to buy into it. Then they're all marching in one direction. They've got a real good purpose. They've got a vision of where they're going to go and what they're going to do. Now, most people never really take the time to put that together. The vision is how you will execute your purpose. So here we are. We've established what we really love to do. We put our purpose together. Then how are we going to live it? Well, that's where the vision comes in. That's when you choose the vision. The vision 
is how you're going to live your purpose. Now, this can be a lot of fun. It can be, it can be an enjoyable exercise. But like I said, it's not something that you're going to sit down and do in 15 minutes. You probably want to take some time and go away and possibly go away with, a, I don't know, somebody that you have a lot of respect for, a mentor, a coach, and, and, and really establish. This is so important. Your life will just, it, I mean, you're really raising the bar when you do that. When you have the vision, then it's important that you set the goal. You see, Andrew Carnegie gave wonderful information to Napoleon Hill. He said, any idea that is held in the mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate physical form that's available. Now, that requires some explanation. And I, uh, I love this quote. I, I want to suggest that you may burn this into your mind. He said, any idea that's held in the mind, doesn't matter what it is, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered. You know, the, the great sufferer in the Bible, Job, he says, lo, the thing I fear has come to visit upon me. Well, any idea, an idea is energy. The idea controls the vibration. He said, any idea that's held in the mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate physical form that's available. Now, that explains the creative process. That explains how you get the things you need to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. You may need great amount of money. You may need a lot of people. You may have to have an enormous team working with you. Do you know that you will attract everything that's required to accomplish the goal when you build the idea. See, you can build a beautiful purpose, you can have a great vision, and then you lock into the goal. Now, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's something that, that you've really got to get into. You've got to study this. There was a, a, a phenomenal author back around 1903, Wallace D. Waddles. He wrote a book called The Science of Getting Rich. Lloyd Conant from the Nightingale Conant Corporation gave me that around 1968, and I've never stopped studying it, the little green book. I took it and I developed it into a seminar series. It's a phenomenal seminar series. So it's something that, that, uh, that you really want to study. So as you look at this and you get thinking about this, you know, you get, you, you get the idea going, and this is where you develop the desire. He said, desire is the effort of the possibility within Seeking expression without through your action. So what are we talking about now? You build the purpose, why you're living. You build the vision of how you're going to live, and then you select the goal. Now, the goal is mighty important, and that's what Carnegie was talking about, and I think that's what Wallace D. Waddles is talking about. You see, the goal is how you're going to realize your vision. The goal is one bite out of the vision, and you take that bite, and then you take another one. And so a person with a goal and with a vision buried deep in their heart and they've got a proper purpose, that person is alive. I mean, they are really living. They're going to have no difficulty having energy. They'll have all the energy that they'll ever need. They'll attract everything that they need to accomplish what they want to accomplish. But without this, life just sort of becomes, uh, you know, a, a, a bit of a dull trip. But when you have the purpose and the vision, the goal down right, and you start to understand the miracle of your mind and exactly what's going on inside, but then you have to understand, clearly understand, that remember, the paradigm is the only roadblock between you and making any of this happen. Now, odds are pretty good you are not programmed to sit down and do this. And we're all busy. You're busy. I'm busy. I think everybody I know is busy. You know, we thought when all this new technology came out that we would have more time. It's actually caused us to become busier. We communicate faster. The world has shrunk. You can communicate with the person on the other side of the world as easy as you can communicate to a person sitting right beside you at a table. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, how do we want to live? Do we want to keep going at warp speed and not wonder and wondering what's going to happen? Or are we going to give our life direction? Because that's what the purpose and the vision and the goal are all about. And so you've got to make it meaningful. It's got to be something that you really want, something that's going to mean something to you. And when you do this, everything starts to win. Now, you know, we have the ability in our consciousness, if we look at this little diagram as the mind and the body, 
we have the ability in our consciousness to pick anything we want. We were blessed with phenomenal mental faculties. We cover all of the mental faculties in another presentation in this series, but you've got phenomenal mental faculties, and you've got the, the ability to build whatever you choose in your consciousness. When you build that idea, you have to let that idea then seep into every power of your, part of your being. And let is the key word. You don't try. I hear people say, I'm trying to get emotionally involved. Stop trying. Let yourself get emotionally involved. Some people think if they only worked harder at it. Price Pritchett tells a great story about a fly dying on the windowsill trying to fly through the glass of a window pane. He says, you know, they, you can hear it and it's not going to make it. He thinks a little more effort. When just a few steps away, the doors open and the freedom the fly seeks. Well, sometimes we work like the fly. We've got to realize we've got these mental faculties. We've got our sensory factors. We want to use our sensory factors in the proper way. We want to look and, and study the things outside that are going to move us towards our goal, that's going to help us live our vision or our purpose and realize our vision. But let's realize that we've got the ability to choose anything we want in our consciousness. The subconscious mind is universal intelligence. You've got to let that idea sink into every molecule of your being. You've got to feel it. You've got to feel yourself involved with what it is you're doing. Otherwise, you're not really on purpose. Now, when you do that, everything starts to click for you. Now, otherwise, if you just gather information and let it stay in your consciousness and gather more information, let it stay in your consciousness, nothing happens. The paradigm has to shift. I see people going to seminar after seminar after seminar and nothing happens. You see, my life did change. It changed dramatically. I went from earning $4,000 a year to over a million dollars a year. I had no formal education, I had no business experience, the things that happened to me were shocking. And I wasn't satisfied with the win, I wanted to know why they happened, so I began to study. And I started to go to a lot of seminars. Now, I'm operating on the opinion that you probably go to a lot of seminars. And sometimes you'll see the same people there studying the same thing, but nothing happens. They don't make it happen. You know, why don't they? What's missing with these people? It's missing, the part that's missing is the understanding of how paradigms are built, how paradigms are shifted, how we change them. Yet it's so important you start to understand this. Otherwise, you're just gathering a lot of information. Now, if you keep gathering information and the results don't change, you're causing tremendous frustration in your own life. It's the same. You have kids in school. They keep studying, 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 and the marks don't change. What do we do? We tell them to study some more. Help them alter the paradigm. Help them change the ideas that are fixed in their subconscious mind. Help them understand the genius that's locked up within them. Help them understand their God's highest form of creation. Help them understand how their mind works. See, little children will grasp this information. Salespeople will grasp this information. You see salespeople setting goals to pacify the sales manager. Or they set goals to pacify their upline if they're in networking. This is going on all the time. It's a dumb exercise. Help them understand how the mind functions. Help them understand the role the paradigm plays in their life. Then they're going to learn how to change it. This is so important and it's so misunderstood. You know, there's, there's nothing more rewarding than getting into some good information and start to understand that information and see how it works. You know, there's, there's just a ton of good stuff around today. I started to study this back around 1960. And you know, when I started to study, you had a difficult time finding a good book. Today, we've got, you know, satellites, we've got computers, we've got uh, television, we've got CDs, DVDs, we've got them installed in cars. I mean, everything's at our fingertip today. We have instant knowledge right at our fingertip. But are we using it? Well, a lot of people are not, and they're not using it because they have a state of confusion reigning in their mind, and they don't feel good about themselves. They know that they're gathering all this information, and yet they're still not winning. Now, if that's happening to you or it's happening to some of your associates, stop and, and take a look at what you're doing. Start to observe your own behavior. Start to observe your, your, your plan of action. 
take a look at your goal. Is it something I really want or is it something that I just think I can do? Am I doing the same thing every day? Am I having the same problems over and over again? Because these are all symptoms of a person that is being blocked by a paradigm. It's not that you haven't got what it takes. You do have what it takes. It's a matter of using what you've got. And unfortunately, we've never really learned a lot about that. The little model that we use of the mind and the body is genius. It is an absolute genius. And what we've got to do is go through that over and over and over again. If you will continually study that, continually burn it into your mind, you're going to find your world will begin to change. You'll start to look at other people a little different than you've been looking at them. See, if I sat down with you, I would automatically see your head as your mind and everything from the neck down as the body. I would have an imaginary line right across the center of your head, and I'd be paying very close attention to everything you said to me. I'd be super sensitive to the vibrations that I was picking up from you. I want to know what's going on in your mind. I want to find out what you want, and then I want to help you get it. Now, do you know, that is the secret to success. Givers gain. Burn that into your mind. Givers gain. Find out what the other person wants and then show them how to get it. Study the people. Study the individuals that are running the companies. Study your friends. Study your associates, your own children. Study yourself. Start to watch the behavioral patterns. And you will see whether the paradigm's in control of the person or they're in control of the paradigm. If they're in control of the paradigm, they're making a paradigm shift. If they're not in control, the paradigm's controlling them. Frustration, disappointment is going, to be their, is going to be their result time and time again. We don't have to do that. We want to make sure that we're on purpose. Let's just review what we've covered. Make sure we're on purpose. Our purpose is what we love to do. You see, I think we're all hardwired to do something really special. And that's why we love it. We're programmed to do it. Once we decide what our purpose is, then let's build a vision. Say, this is how I'm going to execute my purpose. And then break it down into small bites. Say, I'm going to go after this goal, then this goal, then this goal. See, a vision is a multiplicity of goals taking down the right road to an absolutely brilliant future. Now, that's all we have time for today. But remember, I keep repeating in this series that there's no shortcuts. Don't look for a shortcut. But understand there is quantum leaps available through the transfers of information and experience. And you can get that through the repetition of listening to the same thing, reading the same thing over and over and over again. I want to thank you for uh, joining us, and I want to congratulate you for taking a paradigm shift. This is Bob Proctor. Thank you. <laughs>